1971 AMC Hornet SC360. And I already know what you're thinking. That's an AMC from 1971. Who cares? Well, I care. So shut the fuck up. These things were little monsters. They came with a 360 cube V8, and sure, the compression ratio was only eight and a half to one, and it had a hydraulic lifter cam and two bolt mains. But the secret in the sauce is in the heads. These SC360s came with the legendary AMC dog leg heads. And with that, great diggity dog, this thing is a gangsta. <laughs> If you got the two-barrel version of the 360, it had 245 horsepower. Not too bad for 1971. But if you upgrade it to the four-barrel, now you get 285 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. Optional with the SC360 was possibly one of the best deals of the muscle car era, and that is the Go Pack. For the low, low price of only $199, you get a four-speed manual with a Hurst shifter and a Ram Air hood. But wait, there's more. Have trouble opening jobs? Cars? Well, too bad. That means your shit's weak. The GoPack's not going to help you, but it does come with dual exhaust, a handling package, a tachometer, and that four-barrel carb. <laughs> Get yours today. Of course, this car's got that Borg Warner T10 four-speed manual. But if optioned correctly, there was the Shift Command automatic or even a Borg Warner three-speed manual. Out back, 354 gears would have been standard, but this car has a little upgrade of 410 gears. So I think we should all take a moment to... Pray for those rear tires coming off the line. I sure hope that driver knows how to feather a clutch because with that engine, those gears, and that short wheelbase, it will not be easy unlike my ex-girlfriend. And then we should talk about one of the major advantages of this car on the drag strip and that is its weight. This thing with driver is only 3,000 234 pounds. The SC360 was a screaming deal in 1971. The base model with the two barrel carb was only $2,663. As I already mentioned, the GoPack was only another $199. And then a twin grip rear was $43. It gives you a grand total of only $2,905. And adjusting for inflation, that'd be about $21,243 today. And even with that great value, they didn't sell many of these cars. Only 784 total and only 306 of those had the combination of the four-barrel carb and the four-speed manual transmission. Keep in mind, AMC sold over 123,000 Hornets that year, so these things are pretty rare. Carcraft Magazine tested an SC360 with a four-speed manual in April of 1971. It ran the quarter mile in 1474 at 96.25 miles per hour. But then they said, you know what, let's throw on some headers and some drag slicks and see what happens. It ran 1378 at 101.9 miles per hour. Motor Trend even added that during their review in completely stock form with some simple tuning, they saw no reason that these cars couldn't consistently run 13s. And that's pretty darn impressive for 1971. Let's check out that opponent and see if they've got enough to sting this Hornet. <laughs> 1970 Dodge Challenger. And this thing's an absolute beast. It's got a 440 cube V8, and since it's of the four barrel variety, it's got a compressor compression ratio of 9.7 to 1. If you upgrade it to the six pack, then the compression ratio is 10 and a half to 1, but you know what I always say, live, laugh, love, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> It makes 375 horsepower and 480 pound-feet of torque. When I took a look inside, I found a hard rod and a four-speed manual. So I guess between these two cars, we have a little four-speed sword fight going on. Swing, swing. And then just like the Hornet, out back is a set of 410 gears. And then we get to the major discrepancy in this matchup, and that is the weight. This Challenger with driver is 3,000 935 pounds. That gives almost exactly 700 pounds advantage to the Hornet, but of course, it's at a major disadvantage in power, so this should be an interesting matchup. Challenger was a pretty good deal back in 1970. The hardtop RT started out at only $3,266, but if you wanted that 440, you had to cough up another 130 bucks, and the four speed was $194. Then of course the sure grip was $42, and that gives you a grand total of $3,632. Adjusting for inflation, that'd be $27,724 today. Who wouldn't pay that? Challenger RT sold all right in 1970. There were about 20,000 of them, but if you break that down into those with the 440 and that manual transmission, well, that's only 916. Hot Rod Magazine tested a Challenger in November of 1969. It had the 440 with 375 horsepower, but theirs was an automatic transmission and 355 rear gears. Ran the quarter mile in 14.54 seconds at 98 miles per hour. Let's see what these cars will do today. 
And it's the Hornet that takes home the win, running 13.52 seconds at 104.01 miles per hour. And sure, that was slightly worse than the Challenger's 13.46 at 107.32 miles per hour, but remember, ET does not include the reaction time, and the winner is the person who crosses the finish line first. Let's check out round two. In the second round, it's the Challenger that takes home the win, running 13.29 seconds at 108.22 miles per hour. In the other lane, the Hornet ran 13.68 seconds at 105.84 miles per hour. With this best of three tied one all, let's check out that final round. And it's the challenger that takes home the win in the best of three title, running 13.16 seconds at 109.21 miles per hour. In the other lane, the Hornet ran 13.69 seconds at 104.22 miles per hour. A huge thanks to the owners for bringing out these cars. It was absolutely awesome seeing them on the drag strip. I'll catch you guys at the next one.